All right, your old friend Chris here. Hey, you know what? We're going to have fun. We're going to actually paint. I was on vacation just the other uh, last week. I was on vacation and I was uh, in my motel room and I said, hey, let me have some fun. Let me relax. I was already relaxed. I was didn't have a care in the world. I had a nice, um, I ordered from Rune Service a nice bottle of Merlot, half bottle. So this is a small little bottle, half a bottle. And I plas some plastic cups they sent up to me, to my room. And and I have um, one of my my travel brushes here, my Charles Reed travel brush. And this was a glass top table, which added much more interesting uh, dynamics to this painting. Because when you set something on top of a glass top table, sometimes you'll get a really nice uh, levit... It looks like almost like it's levitating the brush. Because you have that thin glass and then you have the table below and it gives you a little bit of a uh, space in between the shadow and the object above. So this just added more interest to this painting. I hope you'll uh, really try, I hope you'll try this. I hope you like this painting uh, that we're doing here and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'll show you exactly how to do it step by step. We're going to go nice and slow, take our time. I'll show you exactly how we're going to do this. Uh, again, you can pause the video and work from this drawing and you can paint and draw from this or you can wait till the end of the video and then stop the video at that point at the end and draw and paint from that uh, painting that we're going to do, that we're going to create as we go. So this is just, this is our what we're going to work from and I'm going to set this up across from me and we're, go we're also going to add an interesting feature. We're going to do a tone. We're going to actually tone our watercolor paper first then we're going to create this painting. So we're going to actually add another layer of interest to an already interesting painting, frankly. So we're going to we're going to work on it all here. Get excited. Hey, I always wanted to mention, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. We make in really fun, exciting videos just like this every week. And we're also always creating uh, new and different uh, type videos of different subject matter, flower paintings, landscape paintings, cityscape paintings, uh, still life paintings. We do it all here. So anything watercolor, come on by, subscribe, you'll get the videos. And if you subscribe, you'll get the video. If you hit the notification bell, which is right next to the subscribe button below in this video, that'll alert you exactly when our video comes out. And if you don't like the video, you can wait till next week because we have something interesting the following week that you might like. So not everybody likes to do still life like this. Not everybody likes to do flowers. Not everybody likes to do cityscapes. But I always change my paintings consistently so that you always find something you like as you come back to my site over and over and over again here on YouTube. So YouTube's a great place. I really enjoy painting here and I'm always changing and doing different things. I like painting all different subject matter. So you're going to see That'll always bring something new to the uh, to the table as we as we work. So let's get started. We'll take a quick break here. I'll reset up in just a second, and we'll get started on our drawing and painting of this wine bottle, paintbrush, and glass of wine. Okay, this is your old buddy Chris back again. We're just gonna get um, started here. I will take this painting out of my sketchbook from vacation just last week. I'm going to set it up across from me. And we have a, some Fabriano paper all set up, taped off. So we taped our borders. We have some Fabriano extra white paper. My sketchbook paper was um, Canson. It's a Canson uh, sketchbook. So the watercolor, actually the Canson watercolor uh, sketchbooks are really nice. I find these are the best that I can find locally. I go to my local Blix art store and they have these in stock and they're beautiful. They work great. You can see that uh, that painting that was just up on here looked pretty good. And that was, uh, you know, just it, it's really phenomenal actually. For sketchbook work, it, it's great. So now we're going to do a little bit more. Uh, this is a little better. Uh, well, you know, this is a. This is a high quality paper, the Fabriano Extra White Rough Paper. So we have that taped off there. And what we're going to do is, let's, um, I'm 
Okay, for some reason, I'm not sure how it happened, but um, if I zoom in, let me zoom in here. Um, let me see. Let's see if we can do this here. Let me turn my phone this way. So. I'm going to get back here to my photos. I took a photo of that sketchbook painting, as you just saw, with my camera, with my phone, my iPhone here. And there it is. So I'm going to see if I can... There we go. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see that. I'm going to try to zoom. Oh, there we go. All right, we're zoomed in. I'm going to try to focus a little better with my width. Okay, so I zoomed in. If you can see that, that's the finished painting. And then for some reason, um, I took another picture just a few minutes later and the light was different coming through the window and it gave it like a uh, a tone to the whole picture, like a greenish blue tone. So I think that greenish blue tone actually looks great. It enhances the photo versus that one there is a little cool. So um, let's experiment. We're going to experiment here. We're going to try to get that and capture that warmish green gold tone that's on the uh, paper here. So for some reason the light was different when I took the picture. This was the picture before I added the background. So you can see how the painting looks before I added the background. So I took the picture in phases. This is when I did the bottle and the glass of wine and the brush. I took a break. I took a picture. Then I filled in the background behind the glass table and you can see that there. Now the glass, you know, I neg you know, negative shape painting around the back of the table. Gave us that look of the table there. It looks, looks really good. looks exciting. Gives it more variety, the painting, versus just maybe, uh, uh, maybe more of a um, boring background. And then this happened too. I took another picture when I was completely finished with all the um, details on the label of the wine bottle. And... Uh, and you can see that the light was different. Maybe there were some clouds. Actually, I think there were some clouds in the sky that blocked a little bit of the light and made it look a, a little bit different, like a little bit of greenish gold. So let's go for this look. Now to get this look, we're going to actually tone our paper a bluish green. So let's do a blue-green tone over our watercolor paper first. We'll do a glazing of a bluish green, and then we'll start and, and start working. Okay, all right, and that's the goal we're going to look for, the greenish-blue um, sort of tone over the entire paper, and then we're going to continue working. So let's get started with that. We're going to set this across from us on our table, and I'm seeing that as a, a bluish-green tone. I'll go right in, find myself a square brush Let's see if I can find a square brush here okay I found a good square brush here and a flat brush so I found a nice uh, white sable Robert Simmons flat brush let's see if I can zoom zoom in I want to make sure I'm focused in let me take my card my business card just make sure I'm zoomed in here correctly and focused yeah that looks good I'm just checking my camera now I'm going to zoom out there we go 
And if you want to make videos yourself as a watercolor artist, I just have a Canon 80D camera set up on a glide gear. It's called glide gear. It's a it's basically a frame that you bolt down to your table, to your working table. And then you can uh, bolt your camera. Uh, you can you can you can actually fasten your camera to this uh, frame that you set up on your table, and then you have a nice stable frame. And I guess uh, maybe someday we'll go over making videos if you want. I don't know how many people out there, if you guys and gals want to create your own videos, if you do, let me know in the comments section of this video. I'll cover my gear maybe, kind of go over what I have here in my studio as far as how I create my videos. If you're, if you're just thinking you might want to do that, you might be at the place where you're thinking of maybe expanding out and wanting to create your own videos and watercolor videos on YouTube. And I encourage you to do that if you want. It's a great way to expand, uh, get more interested in your art, uh, getting yourself out there. It's exciting. I really, I'm excited about always painting on YouTube and, you know, creating my videos. And, I, you know, if anyone wants to do that as well, let me know in the comments section. Maybe I'll make a couple videos on how I create my videos. Um, and if not, no big deal. There's thousands of other videos out there online on YouTube that you can learn how to create uh, your own videos. So let's do it. Let's get started. Let's get our cerulean blue. I'm going to put a little bit of um, Prussian blue on my uh, palette and then maybe some uh, raw sienna like that. So I have my flat brush, plenty of water and let's uh, let's get a wash on and I'm just going to do tons of water. I'm just going to do tons of water on here. I'm just going to basically get a tone on this paper. And you can you can kind of mix mix it on your paper. Doesn't have to be all one wash of one color. Take some cerulean blue. Right? Some cerulean blue, take some raw sienna and just kind of blend them and get yourself just a nice tone on your paper, a light tone, doesn't it? It's not not too much, right? Does that make sense? Just a light tone to um, kind of give your watercolor paper a little bit of a tone, a little bit of warmth and, you know, cool, warm and cool everywhere. Warm and cool everywhere. Your tone should be some raw sienna everywhere, some cerulean blue everywhere. And now that I have that on the paper, we're going to let that dry. So now's the perfect time. You take a break. And, and trust me, it's not too much that I put on. I put a very light, let me show you. This is, uh, let me, this is white paper. And that's the tone I put on, very little. You see how that, the little, the bit, little bit of tone I put on, it's on both sides of this watercolor paper I just put on. The, so it should be just a little bit of tone, not, not too much, just a little. And that's my white. This is just ordinary white, actually, you know, regular white watercolor paper. And this will dry even a little lighter. Always remember, when you put a wash on your watercolor paper, it's always going to dry lighter. Always remember that. Whenever you're working with watercolor, it always dries lighter than when, you, when you're putting it on to your paper, it's going to dry lighter. So you always have to remember that when you're painting, watercolor washes will always dry lighter than when you put it on. So that's all you have to remember. And you'll be fine. Okay, so I've got my light wash of raw sienna and cerulean blue. Cerulean blue up here. I put some raw sienna down here and then I mix the two to give myself a nice bluish green light tone to the paper, to my watercolor paper. And then I'm just going to let this sit for like an hour or two. So I'm going to come back an hour or two later 
And if you can't wait and you're real impatient like I am actually, you'll probably go and you'll get your blow dryer. And then you get your blow dryer. So if you can't wait and you want to dry it out real fast, you can get your blow dryer, heat gun. This is a heat gun. It's a little more powerful than a, than a blow dryer. And uh, you can dry off your paper 100%, make sure it's totally dry, and then you're going to start your drawing. So we're going to do that. We're going to come back in just a few minutes. We're going to dry this off with our heat gun, but I'm not going to waste your time doing this online here, you know, on our video. I'll stop the video, I'll dry out my paper, and then I'll come back and we'll do the drawing. We'll start doing the drawing. And again, we're drawing this beautiful wine bottle and wine glass, a nice plastic, little plastic uh, glass, and a paintbrush. So a nice little composition to do. And we're kicking it up a couple notches by toning our watercolor paper to make it look even more interesting. Okay? All right, we'll be right back. All right, you, we're back. We're back and we're excited. We're going to keep working, and I'll keep trying to refer to my original uh, sketchbook painting here. There we go. So this is a half a bottle of wine. So this is a very small bottle. It's half the size of a normal bottle of wine. So that could actually look a little bit odd in your painting. So if you wanted to actually make something a little more, you know, it might look a little, I don't know, this, this looks good to me. I'm not sure if people would pick up on that, but you can see how this is a plastic cup. And this wine bottle looks very small. It almost looks like a uh, vinegar bottle. Maybe you could, you know, sometimes you pick up vinegar um, at the at the supermarket, you know, for salads and things. So this could pass for like a vinegar bottle. If you had a vine vinegar bottle around, you could use that actually. If you wanted to set it up actually on a table. But um, we're going to work from this painting anyway, this sketchbook painting. So I just wanted to show this one more time, and then we're going to get started. We're going to do our contour drawing. I'll just use this. I'll set this right up across from me. And I just have a number uh, two office pencil. That's all I need for this. And uh, I'm going to look at my, you know, as you know, when we work here, on my channel, I'll always say, you know what? Try to get some hash marks on your uh, on your uh, border of your uh, watercolor paper. If you have it taped off, if you tape your watercolor paper down when you're doing a painting, which is always a great idea, get some hash marks on there. So here we're looking at my painting across from me, my sketchbook painting, and I'm saying. Well, it's about not quite half, but about a third of the way is this t glass top table starts there. Then over here, the glass top table finishes up about there. And then our wine bottle is about on the golden mean, about here. So our wine bottle is about there. And, you know, we can put a little WB wine bottle. And then our cup is uh, about here, cup. And that's all we really need. If we can get the wine bottle, approximation of the wine bottle here, cup is about here, that's all we need. And then the paintbrush is over here, which is no big deal. We could figure that out. We don't need hash marks for our paintbrush. And we're gonna get started. All right, so um, let's take our glass top table mark here and then just go around and get a light pencil mark just like that now I'm gonna make it darker so you can see it it's up to you how dark and light you want to make your lines here on this video it's a little bit difficult to see the pencil lines I would tend to go with a touch lighter pencil line than I just did here but I want you to see how I did this. So that, that's why I did that. Now our wine bottle is about here. The top of the wine bottle is almost to the top of our border of the top of our painting. And then the, um, 
the bottom of the wine bottle is about here, halfway. Halfway between the bottom of the painting and the glass top table is the bottom of the wine bottle. And this is actually half a wine bottle. Not a full wine bottle, but a half. Then we hop and skip over here and we say our glass is over here. Our wine, plastic wine cup is here. So I'm just kind of placing where I need to be with my subject matter on this painting. Now we have our um, shadow for the wine bottle. Basically just extends down vertically from the top of the, from the bottom of the wine bottle down vertically. Our lines just transfer down for our shadow. We just do a light, light, super light shadow line just so we know where to put our shadows. Then our paintbrush is about halfway, not quite halfway down to the bottom of the painting. It's a little less than halfway from the bottom of the glass down to the bottom of the painting is our paintbrush. So we're going to just uh, put that there. And I'll just lightly sketch that. Just put a little line there. Alright, so now we have everything correctly positioned. Our subject matter is correctly positioned. That's the key. When you're going to contour draw and sketch your uh, subject matter in your um, rectangle, your, your painting, you want to definitely make sure you're kind of laying everything out in the beginning before you start drawing and painting. So we did that. We got the top of the bottle up here, just about to the top of the painting, just a touch down from the top of this border up here of the painting, the tape, top of the wine bottle, which is a half wine bottle, not a quite full bottle. Then we come down. The table was one third. The table is one third down here, the glass top table. And then you have the other third here. So you have one third, two thirds. Now the bottle's here, goes down. Halfway between the edge of the table and the bottom of the painting is the bottom of the half wine bottle. All right, so we're having a great time here. We're laying everything out. Hey, this is important. If you lay out everything just right, then when you start drawing, you're, everything's going to go smooth and you're going to see how it works out this way. All right, so we have our bottom of the wine bottle, bottom of the wine glass, which is right here, just a little lower than the wine bottle, and our paintbrush is right here, about halfway between the bottom of the painting and the bottom of the wine glass. All right, so now we have our, our hash marks that we used to get our subject matter where that's going to be positioned cup wine bottle bottom of the wine bottle bottom of the wine glass now we can say all right our wine glass is just a touch above the top of the edge of the glass top table so i just make it really super light you you can barely see that on the video i'm sure but I did put it here, just so we know. And then our, our wine bottle is there. And we can kind of look at our wine bottle and say that it comes down to about here and then it starts to flare out. Like that. Okay. So we're all set. Let's start contour drawing. Contour drawing, simply start one, one place and then just start going around your painting. Go for the gusto, don't worry about it, it doesn't have to be perfect. And just don't stop, keep going. If you see a label, put our label in. Let's put our label in as we're going up here on this vertical. Let's put our label in. Like that, it's going to have a little bit of a curve to it, the label because it's going around the bottle, the label, so you're going to see that. The label's about a little more than halfway across the bottle, so we got that. There we go. So you have the label. 
Okay, now we come down this way. Then we have another label on the bottle, on the back of the bottle. And that goes there. Okay, so we got our two labels, bottom of the bottle. Now we're going to come down and we're going to get the bottom of the top. The top of the bottle of wine has a covering and that goes down about three quarters of the way. Okay, now we're going to look at the wine in the bottle. There's wine in this bottle, and we've already had a glass poured out, so it's half a bottle of wine left. Half of a half of a bottle of wine. And there we go. Oval, you could put an oval in there like that. Then we are going to travel down. Shadows are already in there for our bottle. We hop, skip, and jump, and let's do the cup. So the plastic cup is like so. We make an oval. Like that. here. So I'm making ovals. And that looks good. Shadowing the shadow of the wine glass, wine cup, plastic, um, translucent it's a translucent cup, a clear plastic cup. We have the shadow of that cup is this way. Remember, the light is coming from in front of us, so we're painting into the light. So we're painting into the light. The light's in front of us, coming this way. And then we see the shadow come down here. It comes across here. And now let's draw in our paintbrush. Just uh, looking at my drawing carefully. There's some there's some details on the ferrule of the brush here, the metal part of the brush. Then there's some wood handle here. Then there's another area of the top of the brush, which is the travel brush, and that goes like so. And that's brass. This looks a little bit larger, so I drew the brush a little larger than than uh, what is actually in real life. We're going to have to let's let's adjust this. I made the brush a little bit too large. That's when you take your kneaded eraser. A race. Let's take a break. The reason I say take a break is right now I'm losing a little bit of my concentration and that's why I made my brush a little bit too big. Let's take a quick break. I'll come back. We'll finish the brush and then we'll start painting. All right, we're back. I took a break. You need breaks. I need breaks. Hey, breaks are good. I, I was losing concentration a little bit here. I made the brush uh, too large for this painting. 
we're trying to stick to our original. So again, I'll go back to my original sketchbook painting. And uh, this is it here, the original sketchbook painting. So you can see the brush is, the whole entire travel brush fits within this painting. Um, but they, when you're painting from a watercolor painting or any painting or from a picture from a book or picture online or whatever you're, whatever you're working from, it's probably never going to turn out exactly the same if you do it two or three times. So no worries. I realize it's going to be a little different, but I did make it quite large, the paintbrush. So let me just make this paintbrush a little bit smaller, my watercolor brush here. Okay, so I make my watercolor brush a little bit smaller. Like that, and there's some... Like that. Okay, that looks better. Not perfect, but it, it looks better. All right, we're ready to start painting. Let's get into it. Number five, Da Vinci Travel Brush. That's what I'm going to use here. Da Vinci, number five, Pure Kalinsky. 1503 Germany travel brush. These are great if you're going to travel and do any vacation painting or if you're just going to go out on the weekend and or anytime and do a little bit of outdoor sketching. You can put your brush away like this. Put it in your pocket. Put it in a, a backpack. Put it in a, a duffel bag. Whatever. And then when you get to your location to paint, you just unscrew it. Screw it together like so, and there you go. You got your perfect brush to paint with, nice and light. Saves the point on your brush when you put it back in. This. So when you're done painting, you just take it, open it up again. Like that, you unscrew it, and you put it back in. And this way it saves the uh, brush tips of your paintings, uh, of your paint brush. So that's how that works. It works great, these travel brushes. All right, so let's get started. I'm gonna start with my bottle. So I'm gonna go with green, sap green, olive green, cerulean blue, a little bit of uh, cobalt blue, French ultramarine blue. So all you can see is I did blues and greens up here. So we'll get started with those, blues and greens. And it's not going to be super dark as far as tonal value goes. So I'm not, I'm not going right in and just scooping out paint and putting it on this bottle here. I'm leaving it with some water in it. You can see that? A little bit of water in that paint, but not too much uh, water. Just a little bit of water in the paint, not a whole lot. But not straight paint either, right out of the tube. So you kind of just see how I'm getting my paint out on the paper. Maybe a little bit of Viridian too. Let's get some Viridian in there. Let's get some uh, warmer colors going. Warm and cool. Warm and cool everywhere. You don't want to go uh, too far without hitting on your warm colors. Your gold tones, your gold paint. Maybe some raw umber in there. Some more blue. There we go. Some blue. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful. Look at all those colors. That's exciting, right? All those different colors. Then you can go up here and tap in some straight cerulean blue right out of the tube. Couple more spots. Okay. There we 
we go. Okay, let's get into our reds. The bottle that I had, the bottle of wine was some beautiful reds there. We had some alizarin crimson, some rose matter, some cadmium red, some burnt sienna. So we're going to get all the beautiful reds out there. And let's get some reds in here. Let's do that. Let's do it. Get some exciting colors on the paper. Straight out of the tube paints here. The reds are um, pretty much straight tube paint. I'm not mixing too much water with those. Because the tonal values of these was pretty dark. So if you can imagine. Um, and then we have some. Let's go with some darks. French ultramarine blue. Let's go with some. Uh, some really nice uh, Prussian blue there. So we're going to get some shadowing under the... There we go. And let's go with some more reds. We have all those reds, beautiful reds mixed up. Let's just... like that. There we go. And maybe I'll leave some, uh, maybe a touch of light on top of the bottle there, like that. Maybe a touch of darks over here on the top. Okay. A couple of splashes. All right, we're having a good time here. Let's um, continue with our wine bottle. Let's go with some more red here. We're gonna go with red for the red wine. Straight tube paint. I wouldn't use much water. I would just go straight to paint right here, all through here. Okay, and some darks here for the shadow right underneath where the bottom of the bottle is. So let's add some dark darks where the bottom of the bottle is. And that is Prussian blue, French ultramarine blue, and uh, that's a little bit of uh, burnt sienna. Now, let's go with um, red, burnt sienna, a little bit of blue. Let's do some shadowing here on the table. There we go. Look at that. Fired in. Fired in, my friends. Fire that shadow in there. Don't be worried about it. As long as you have some... good uh, shadow color with, you know, some blue and some red. Blue and red makes like a purple color here and there. Then you have your shadow. Perfect. Now, uh, red, let's start doing our wine glass. There we go. Now, let's get that darker color. Let's see, burnt sienna. Um, Burnt Sienna, Prussian Blue, pick up some more of that red. We want to make sure that's red. Some more Prussian Blue. Again, you can have fun with the colors. And then we're going to go with our shadow colors, which is just a... We 
we're just going to use our shadow colors like that. Shadow colors are cooler, so I'm going to leave that cool. I might have actually gone over a spot that I wanted to keep a little lighter. So I would take my tissues now and do that. Alright, so we got our shadow colors in there. And all I did was blot up some of the wash with my tissue. And always remember that this shadow uh, wash here is going to dry a lot lighter actually than it looks right now. So it's not going to be an issue. And I'm just constantly, again, referring back to my, my painting here. So you can see how these shadows here are pretty light. And then the shadow from the watercolor brush here, the travel brush here that I have, it's a little bit darker, so we're going to need to be a little darker with that. And the reason I say that is because I painted this, you know, you know, in the moment when the light was coming through the window in my motel room and I'm, you know, I'm having a little bit of wine, I'm having a good time, I'm painting, but I'm really focusing on the the darks and lights of the painting as I'm painting it. So I made sure to capture that this shadow of the brush on the table was darker than this shadow from this this glass, this wine glass here, this plastic cup with wine in it. So we're going to have to get that same idea on, you know, that same pattern on this painting here. So we'll do that. So this will dry. This section here will dry lighter eventually. It's going to take some time, a few 10, 15 minutes or so, or half an hour. That's why we're going to take a break now. We'll let this shadow dry, we'll let these areas dry, and then we'll come back and we'll continue working on this. But as you can see, I'm trying to keep working, I'm keep, I keep looking at this sketchbook painting, and I'm trying to make sure I stick with the, the same uh, pattern that I see here with the light and the darks, the tonal values, because I really was focusing really in intensely on that when I was painting this. You know, I was painting it and trying to make everything accurate, but I was really making sure I was trying to get the lights and darks of everything correct. So let's see if we can replicate that. Okay, so we're going to take a break. We'll come back. We'll continue working on this, but let's let these shadow areas dry in this wine bottle here. We'll let this, let this dry a little bit here and there, and we'll, we'll start up again in just a few minutes. All right, we let things dry a little bit. We're back from a break. Um, a lot of times you'll hear me mention that we should clean our palettes uh, off a little bit, but I really, I haven't been mixing a lot of colors, so that's why I haven't really um, done much as far as wiping up the palettes and so forth. So if you tend to mix a lot of colors and you're doing a lot of work in a painting and you're moving at a pretty fast pace, it's good to take your paper towels and wipe up all your paints and then come back in. Um, actually, you know what? Let's, let's just do it anyway. It's a good, always a good thing. So I'm just going to take a little bit of water. I dampen my, I dampen my uh, paper towel. And I just make sure I get up everything here.
better to clean the palette more often than less often, that's for sure. Because uh, it'll keep your colors looking more vibrant and exciting and fresh. If you keep mixing um, paints into your palette over and over and over and you're not cleaning the palette consistently and constantly, you're going to definitely get muddy looking colors and it's going to really cause you some unpleasant looking uh, washes on your paintings. And the, and the real important thing is, especially when you start doing light washes, like at the end of this painting you're going to notice we're going to do some light washes in the background. That's when you want to make sure you're changing your water out. So here my water is a little bit muddy, not too bad, but you definitely want to change your water often too. So if you just keep in your mind all the time, I always try to give you the best advice and the best information I can give you is always try to make sure you're cleaning your palette all the time with paper towels and always changing your water out with your, um, with your water buckets. If you keep your water buckets changed out, lots of fresh water constantly, and you're cleaning your palette constantly, your painting is going to look so beautiful because you're going to have so much beautiful, pure, clean color as you see here in this palette. You're going to see that on your painting versus if you just keep going back and, you know, putting, never cleaning the palette and just leaving all those old paints on there, you're just going to start to see really muddy looking colors on your paintings that might not look so great. But there are some painter, there are some painters out there that like to like leave kind of a, a muddy looking palette. And there is some cool paintings that you can, you can get from that too. But I guess what I'm saying is if, you, if you're painting on this channel and you're following my paintings and you're trying to recreate the paintings that we have on this channel here, then you're going to want to definitely keep that idea in mind of constantly cleaning the palette and constantly changing out your water so that your water doesn't get too uh, murky. And some people do use two different water buckets. Some people use a, a clean water bucket and a, and a dirty water bucket. And they keep two buckets of water on their table when they're working. And then they'll rinse their brush first, then the muddy bucket. And then they'll go in and they'll use the clean water bucket. But I find that that can be confusing sometimes. So I think it's just better keep one bucket of water and just keep changing out the water like every 15, 20 minutes. Uh, and then you just never go wrong. Okay. Uh, so let's keep going here. We're going to keep working on our wine bottle, wine glass, and paintbrush. I'm changing out my water. I use an orange juice container for my water, so I kind of I have this water juice container, and I keep this by my art table with like, you know, uh, maybe half of it full with water. And then whenever I need new water, I just flip the top open, pour it in, and we're good. All right, so we're going to continue here. I'm thinking let's start working on our brush. So our watercolor brush, burnt sienna, burnt umber, a little bit of cerulean blue. Let's see if we can get a nice... Uh, and then here we have a good point on our brush, on our Da Vinci number no. 5 travel brush. And if you have a nice point, you could just imagine that's really the brush right there. You could just almost tap the brush down and you have it. That's the brush hairs there. Then we have um, raw sienna. We're going to put a line of raw sienna across, like that, and maybe a little bit darker on top. All right, now. Let's go with uh, some Prussian blue, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna, and let's get some color here. Burnt umber.
Now, again, we're going to go with some darker darks. French ultramarine blue, Prussian blue, burnt umber. And let's try to get some of those uh, details on the watercolor brush. There's some Good. Okay. Burnt umber. Burnt sienna. Let's uh, get a, a line. I noticed there was a line of dark wash on this part of the brush. So we just take a nice cruise along here like that. And maybe a little bit of blue, cool colors here underneath. Like that. And then one more mix across there. And then we're going to go with some raw sienna. There we go. Raw sienna, raw umber. And we're going to do a little bit of wash across there. Hit and miss over here. So we're not trying to... You can kind of see I am going to add little bits of variation. Okay, good. Uh, if you don't like a dark or something that you put on your brush, you can lift it up. Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, okay, now we're going to do some shadowing. Now remember we're on a glass top table, so it's going to be low, it's going to be way, way below, see if this was just like if this paintbrush was on top of like a piece of paper, a piece of white paper, or a piece of white foam board, you wouldn't have a space in between the paintbrush and the shadow. But since we're on a glass top table, there's layers of glass in between the paintbrush and the bottom of the table. So if you can imagine, there's a, a bit of a space. So let's make sure we capture that. And I made sure I got that when we were doing this. That looks good. Good. Okay. And I just put a little bit of Prussian blue there. And a little bit of Prussian blue there. And I just wanted to make some variations here on this uh, section here where it's, it's the top of the of the wine inside the glass bottle there. The, or actually the, the um,
okay, we're, we're really, we're coming along here. We're looking pretty good. Um, we're going to get some more darks here and there. Um, let's do some alizarin crimson, French ultramarine blue. It's a little bit darker there on top of the uh, wine inside the bottle. It's a little darker up top there, so let's get that. All right, now let's get some yellow ochre and raw sienna. And let's get some wash on this label. And on this side of the label too. There we go. Okay, we've been working quite a bit. Uh, I know you might get a little bit, uh, you know, um, I hope you don't get too, like, uh, worried about taking breaks. Uh, if you don't want to take a break, you keep working, that's fine. I like to take a lot of breaks here, so I'm starting to notice that since I'm working in these areas and there's a lot of uh, water and paint on the paper, I'd rather let these sections dry before I start working in the background over here. So before I start working in the background, I want to make sure I'm good with these areas drying. And once I do that, I'll be fine. So let's take a, I don't know, five, 10 minute break. We'll be right back. We'll continue on. And uh, we'll start doing our background behind this glass top table. All right, it's Chris here. I'm back and we're going to actually continue on here. We're going to con we're going to finish up our painting here. It's uh, we're we've actually made quite a bit of progress here. If you've gotten to this point, you're really um well along with finishing up the painting. If you can get the, you know, if you get the the wine bottle, the wine glass and the paintbrush completed, you're pretty much home free. Then you're just uh, having fun and putting in some washes behind behind this uh this subject matter. Uh to just give it that finished look. Um, so, um, okay, let's keep working. And again, hey, if you haven't uh, subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, we're going to be doing paintings. You know, we're going to be doing paintings like this every week. Every week we're here. We do paintings. Uh, we do flowers. We do still life wine bottles, wine glasses, paint brushes. We do seascapes, ocean. We do figures. We do landscapes. We do. Um, so, you know, well, we do it. We pretty much do everything here. Anything watercolor, we're we're doing it here. So, and we also do little, you know, offshoots. We do some palette videos where we cover palettes, brushes, colors, um, all kinds of interesting things. So please uh, hit the subscribe button. You know, this way you you keep up on the latest uh, watercolor uh, information. You want to be uh, getting ahead in your watercolors and learning lots of new things and not stagnating and all right so here we're gonna just make this a little bit wider and a little bit more uh, of our greens sap green viridian green a little bit of blue just a little couple little just want to make this a little bit better there a little bit wider That looks a little better and a little wider here too. So I'm just adjusting my bottle a little bit here. That's always good to do. If you can, if you step back and look at your painting, it's always good to step back maybe a couple feet from your working station. So however you're working, uh, you step back a few feet and you just look at your subject matter and you say oh the bottle looks a little bit skinny uh here at the top of the bottle it looks a little thin so that's why we added that little bit of lines and a little bit of wash um, we needed to add a little bit of wash to the edges of the bottle no big deal uh, other than that everything else else looks pretty good 
shadow underneath the brush looks good. Our brush looks fine. Our wine glass looks fine. Now we're ready to do uh, two things. Uh, one, the backdrop, just to get a little bit of wash on the backdrop of this. We're going to bump up to a bigger brush. So we're going to go up to a Raphael number 8. So we're going to go up to a Raphael number 8. And we'll just continue the same colors that we've used before. Again, you don't want to... Let's use the same colors we used in this composition so far with our colors in the background. We don't want to add different colors in. If that makes sense, we want to harmonize everything. So you wouldn't want to start going in with colors you haven't used. Like we wouldn't go in and use, you know, maybe cadmium orange or cadmium red because we really haven't used that. But if you did want to add in those colors, the only thing you'd have to do is make sure you add it everywhere. So if you wanted to add a little bit of cadmium orange to this painting, all you would do is just make sure you add it, you know, three or four different places within the whole composition so that you'll see it throughout the whole painting. That's all you have to do. But we've used plenty of colors, so we're not going to worry about adding anything. And let's, uh, let's just uh, have fun. We'll go for it here. We're going to do some... I'm just going to make sure I go along the edge of the glass top table, like that. And uh, some cerulean blue. And some raw sienna and burnt umber. I mean raw sienna and uh, yellow ochre. Cerulean blue. Then when I add the cerulean blue, I'm going to go right through the cup here. And if you wanted to, you could if you wanted to, you could use even a larger brush than this, or like you could use a flat brush. But this is pretty good. This works pretty good. I'm going to carefully go around the bottle. I don't want to... And a little bit of Prussian blue. Let's put some Prussian blue in there. Russian blue, red, purple. And if you go over a line, no big deal. You can always... And as you can see, I'm just putting in the background, wash, and I didn't fuss around too much. You can see I went through this pretty quick. Um, you can add some ac like dark accent colors, some Prussian blue. Make it interesting, maybe some splashes, um, maybe some... Okay. So now what we did was we...
we made a beautiful background wash. And that background wash actually creates that really bright sense of light on the glass top table. So that really looks good. Um, if we didn't put that background wash in, this bright light on this glass top table would not look as exciting. So that always looks good. You can uh, blot up a couple bits of uh, wash here and there if you want. Sometimes you can... Sometimes using a little bit of a um, blotting technique with your tissues. That just gives an even more interesting look to your background. So we have everything looking pretty good here. You can always add a couple little tiny bits of interesting darks. Like that. A couple splashes of color. That'll all blend in as we do this like that. This will all blend in nicely. French ultramarine blue here. All these colors blend in real nice. And we're going to let this dry. Once this dries, actually we can keep working. Uh, let's use our needle point brush. So we have our needle point brush here. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in our, um, before we do that, let me just add in a little dark blue, French ultramarine blue, and some like that. That kind of gives us an interesting Okay, now we take some French ultramarine blue Burn umber, some uh, Prussian blue, and we'll just add some uh, interesting uh, calligraphy to our uh, here. Quick, easy. Do not, do not take too much time with this. That's really going to get you. Um, Maybe you make yourself a little bit of an indicator line. So these these letters on the bottle are a little bit, they're going to kind of have a kind of a swoop like that. Like you want to capture that swooping uh, kind of oval effect. So you wouldn't want to draw something straight straight across. Like you want to have it following the curve of the bottle. That's important. I've done that many times. And this is... Uh, there we go. So a little bit of calligraphy. You just use your darks for your writing on your bottle here. And this is... Okay, that's good. Then uh, you have a little more... Uh, there's some more... There's some more uh, lettering on the bottle, so let me just do that. Just like that, you know, like that there. And then there's a little insignia up here, like that. And if you don't like the way something looks, no big deal, you can always blot it up. And then if you blot it up, it, it makes it look a little bit less, uh, like that, it looks a little less, uh, There we go. So that looks a little better. And then some more lettering here. Darker darks here. Some lettering. 
like that. Again, very uh, don't don't fuss around with the lettering. Try to get the lettering done real fast, and don't worry about. It. Just make sure it's kind of got a curve to it around the bottle. And then the back has some lettering too, so we just put some there, just like that. Just a couple little spots of color there on the back. And there is a couple lines across the um, wine glass here. So let's get those in very lightly, though. Do not get caught up in doing too much details now at the uh, final stages here. I'm just going to try to get a couple indications of some lines like that. Not everywhere though. Make a couple spots and then let the other spots disappear. Hit and miss, hit and miss, right? Like that. A couple here, a couple, you know, little dashes here and there. Don't fill in every oval or every line. Just kind of the eye, the person looking at the painting is going to figure out the rest. Just like that, that's good enough. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. We're gonna actually uh, peel the tape off now. And we'll just kind of see how the painting looks a little bit more in a close-up fashion here. We'll just move out the palette. We'll peel off the tape and when I peel off the tape you'll see the the tone of the paper a little more so you'll see how we toned the paper with that greenish gold like that so there we go okay and We'll zoom in a little. Okay, so each painting, if you if you create paintings of the same uh, style and you're copying from like let's say a picture or another painting of a watercolor painting, um each time it's going to look a little different. So you can kind of see how this was our original. That was my sketchbook on vacation. Then here now we just recreated this. Looks a little bit uh, different, but still looks pretty good. And you can use either or for your um, for your uh, attempt at doing this uh, painting. So try out this composition, have fun with it. Uh, only difference between this original and this is we put that tone on the paper when we first started. We added some of that green. Uh, greenish gold color, which was cerulean blue and uh, raw sienna. So if you use a little bit of raw sienna and cerulean blue and you just wash the whole paper, let it completely dry 100%, and then you start your drawing and your painting on top of that, you'll notice you'll get that little bit of a tone to your painting where you can give it a little warmer or cooler feel. So I think this looks good. This has got a warmer kind of feel to it with that golden bluish green color and uh, we will see you on the next video have fun enjoy and uh, we'll see you very soon